By the end of this video, you're probably going to be baffled at just how simple it is to get infinite scroll working in a Quasar application. I've never actually needed infinite scroll myself, but I was pretty blown away at how simple it was to achieve using this component. So let's go ahead and build some, some sample data components that we can then use with infinite scroll, just so that we've got something that we can work with as an example. First of all, let's say Q-card. And then inside of that, we'll have a Q-card-section. I'm thinking kind of like a blog post type thing here where we'll have a title and a body. So we've got Q two Q-card sections there. And the first one, let's just do an example title. And then I'll throw in some lorem ipsum, L-O-R-E-M, tab, just so that I got some example text there as well. All right, so what we might do is make this a heading. So Control Shift P, and then I can say wrap, wrap with abbreviation, and I'm going to wrap that in a H3. Let's go with that. There we go. So we've got a H3 there, and I'm going to remove the margining by saying class is equal to Q dash margin Y, and how about none? Yeah, because we already get all the padding we need with the Q card section. So there we go, an example blog post. Now we need to have some data that we can model. So what I might do is if we come over to jasonplaceholder.com.typeycode.com and then we say slash posts, this is a really cool sample route that just gives you some dummy data you can play around with. So I might say view source here. There we go, and we'll just grab a few. How about those ones? So about five posts, copy those. And then I'll come down here and I'll say const sample data is equal to create an array and then just paste that sample data in there. And there we go. So we've got some data to play around with. Copy that sample data. And then we can come up here and say v-4 post in. And how about we just call this sample post? That's probably a better name. There we go. Post in sample posts. And then I think they all have an ID. Yes, they do. So now I can say the key is equal to the post.id. Save it. And there we go. We've got a few posts showing. And let's just do a couple of other things to make it look nice. Q dash gutter dash, uh, how about large? There we go, just to space it out a little bit. And we might make that extra large just to ensure that it does actually give us a scroll bar here. All right, I think that looks good. The next thing I'm going to do is make it so that we can use the infinite scroll. Basically, we're going to set it up so that when you scroll down to the bottom, it's going to load some more posts. All right, so let's come here and wrap this by grabbing all of that and saying Control Shift Enter. Um, actually, you might not have that hotkey, so let's say Control Shift P, wrap. So wrap with abbreviation, and we're going to wrap that inside of a Q dash infinite dash scroll. There we go. And what we want to do here is say at uh, load. So when we want to load more data, I want you to call a function called fetch post, which we'll create in a second. And there we go. Now notice that we lose the gutter there. That's because we now need to take it from the page and put it on this component. Because we want the gutter to be on the component that wraps the thing that's going to be repeated. In this case, the card, which is why we moved it from the page to the infinite scroll and now it's working again. Okay, next let's create this fetch posts function. So I'll come down here and then I'll say function fetch posts and that's going to accept a couple of things. First, it gets the index, which is really handy. So if it's basically fetching it for the first time, we get one, for the second time we get two, etc. And then we also get done. So this is a function that we call when we're done so that the component knows that it is done uh, basically fetching data and it can then display that data and then also hide any spinners that might be showing. So let's go ahead and implement this. We'll do something really simple to begin with. Let's change that from sample posts. Oh, I might just come in here and say const post is equal to a reference. So I just imported ref there. Make sure that's aligned nicely. Come back down again. And then what I'll do is I'll create an array and then I'll spread sample posts in there. The reason I do it this way is because this is essentially going to duplicate sample posts rather than the ref pointing directly to sample posts. And I'll show you why we do that in a second. Now what we can do is say, when you fetch the posts, I want you to say post.value 
dot push and we're basically just going to grab the sample posts and push those onto the array. And the reason I did a duplicate here is to ensure that we're not actually adding them to the sample post, otherwise it would double in length every time. If you, don't want to, if you don't know what I mean by that, that's totally fine. It's not important for this video. And then when this is done, we call that done function. Let's refresh the page and see if this works. Oh, nothing's happening. And that's because I forgot to actually use this ref. I bet you saw that. <laughs> so instead of sample posts, we just want to use our posts ref now. Let's see if it works. And there we go. As we scroll down, it's going to load some more posts, which at the moment is basically just duplicating from those sample posts. Let's do a more advanced example now where we actually use this type code API. I'm going to open up my console and then say yarn add Axios. So it's going to go, in, go ahead and install Axios. And then I'll get rid of everything we've got here and basically just rewrite it from scratch. We'll keep the ref though. Now, first of all, we'll import Axios, import Axios from Axios so that we can start making some requests. Next, we wanna say what the API URL is. API URL, and that's going to be equal to essentially what we've got here. So let's copy that and we'll paste it in. We can probably get rid of posts. And there we go, that's the URL for the API. What next? Well, we also want our post. So let's say const post is equal to a reference to an empty array. And then we also wanna have a limit. So we only wanna grab a certain number of posts, which is basically going to allow us to do some pagination with this API. All right, so more on that in a second, const limit, and we don't need a ref for this. I might just set it to, how about 14 by default? And then I'll come down here and create an async function. And this is what's going to actually fetch our posts. And then that's gonna take in the index and then whether or not it's done. Next, let's console.log index and then move on. And of course, this isn't necessary. We're just doing it to get a little bit more insight. The next thing I'm going to do is say const start is equal to index, make sure I spell const correctly, uh, index times the limit. So essentially what we're doing here is we're saying if the index is one, so the first page, we multiply one by our limit, which is 14, meaning we get the first 14 posts. And then if our index is two, and we multiply two by 14, then we end up starting off. So our start is then 28. So basically we're making sure the start where we fetch our posts from is at the correct offset. That's what we're doing here. Next, we're going to create the query string. So we'll say const query, and that's going to equal, we'll make that a template string and say question mark underscore start. And then we're going to send through there the start. And then we'll also say and to add some more data we're sending through, underscore limit is equal to, and then whatever our limit is. Let me just show you what that actually looks like. So we might just copy this, paste it in there. And if I were to say the start is equal to, how about 12, that means it's going to skip the first 12. And then let's set the limit equal to three. So we only get three posts. Enter. And there we go. It basically means we start from 12, which is why we have an idea of 13 here, because it's the one after 12, and it's just gone ahead and fetched three posts. So essentially what we're doing here is we're querying the API so we can get some more specific data. All right, moving on. Next, we want to say const data. This is where we'll do the actual request is equal to await axios.get. And we're going to go to the API URL, and then we'll append to that the query. So what we're essentially doing here is saying, Axios, go ahead and fetch from the API. Oh, and we'll have to tack on here, slash posts. By the way, this isn't the most robust way you would use Axios. You'd probably um, do a little bit more setup so that it's a bit more reusable. I just wanted to make this example as simple as possible. So essentially we're hitting that URL, plus 
the query, which is going to allow us to get the exact data that we need. And then we're getting that from posts. Okay, moving on. When this is done, we can then say post.value.push and we can send that data through. And once again, this is just an example. You wouldn't be this optimistic. You probably have to deal with errors as well in a real life application. In fact, you almost certainly would want to do that, but we're going to keep this simple in this example. And then the last thing we want to do is call it done. It's very important we call it done at the end. Otherwise, the component doesn't know when it's done. Okay, let's have a look at that and see if it works. Coming back, refresh the page. Okay, it looked like that worked. Let's scroll down. And it worked. It went ahead and fetched some more data. Let's do another one. And it worked. Fetch some more data. So that's actually using a real API to go ahead and fetch extra data. However, notice that they're all the same, and that's because we've hard-coded everything. So let's go ahead and do this properly by saying post.title here. And then this, I believe, is post.body. So we'll say post.body. There we go. That's a more realistic looking example. Okay, so unfortunately, this is going to cache it. So when I do show you how to use the loading spinner, I'm going to have to change some, some variables around so that I don't get cache results. Because notice when I hit the bottom, straight away it loads the data. It's a little bit too fast to see a spinner. So let's have a look at how we would add a spinner when using infinite scroll. Come down here and say template. And then we can say here, loading. And inside of there, we can put our loading spinner. So what I'll do is I'll add a div and we'll give it a class equal to row justify center. This is just a really nice way to justify something horizontally. So center something horizontally. And let's add some margining as well so that the loading spinner isn't pushed up too close to our content. Q dash margin Y and medium is probably a good size for that. Inside of here, we can now put our spinner Q dash spinner dash dots. And you can look at the Quasar docs on spinners to see what you have available to you. Then we'll say the color is equal to primary. And then let's set the size equal to something reasonably big, 40 pixels. Okay, so let's save that. And now when we scroll to the bottom, we're barely going to see that spinner because of the caching problem I was talking about before. So let's change this limit to maybe 22. And there we go, you saw it there. And you can see it again every time you hit the bottom. Very cool. How easy is that to use a infinite scrolling spinner inside of your components? And of course, you can make this spinner anything that you want and it's going to work nicely. Now, another thing that you might want to do is actually the reverse of this. So at the moment, we're scrolled to the top and scrolling down. But in apps like, uh, like Facebook Messenger, for example, you actually scroll up and then it loads more messages from the past. So what you can do to get that effect is simply add here, reverse, and it's literally that simple. It even scrolls to the bottom of the page for you. So watch this, I'll refresh the page and it already scrolls to the bottom for me. Now I'll come down here and change this to 23 so we fix that caching problem. And if I scroll to the top, now it loads data from the top. How cool is that? Literally one attribute and we were able to do it in reverse. Now, another problem you might run into is having infinite scroll inside of a div. I'll show you what I mean by that. I'm going to grab all of this. So basically all of infinite scroll, control shift P, and we're going to say wrap abbreviation. And we're going to wrap that inside of just a plain div I think we'll do. There we go. And then how about we say class is equal to Q dash padding or medium. We'll add some padding to that div. And I want to set a max height here, max dash height. And by the way, you're always going to want to have a max height or a set height whenever you have an infinite scroll inside of something like a div. We didn't have to do it in this example because we had the entire page. However, if you don't, if the infinite scroll can't figure out the max height, then it's not going to work properly. And it doesn't have to be max height. It can just be a normal height, but we're gonna set max height in this example. There we go. Now let's say 250 pixels, for example, and we'll say overflow is equal to auto. All right, 
notice that we're getting this kind of repeating effect here. It's sort of, um, what do you call that? It's sort of entered a loop. And that's because it needs to know the container that it's inside of. Infinite scroll needs to know where the scrolling is occurring, which in this case is this div here. So what we can do is say ref is equal to scroll target ref or whatever you want to call it. Now we need to actually make a variable for this ref. So let's come down here and then I might just do it here. Const scroll target ref is equal to, and we'll just do an empty ref there coming up. This means that when the component's created, this div is going to attach onto that ref variable. And now we say, hey, infinite scroll, I want you to have your scroll target equal to this component here. Scroll dash target, I believe that's what it is. And then we can say, hey, this is our target ref. All right, so one more time, essentially what we're doing here is saying, we are scrolling inside of this component. So we're giving Quasar's infinite scroll that extra bit of information so that it can scroll correctly. All right, let's refresh the page and see if this works now. Scrolling to the top and it works. Oh, something didn't quite look right there. Let's try a refresh. Scrolling to the top. I'll try removing reverse here. All right, let's see how this works. All right, that seems to be fine. So something was messing up when I set that to reverse. But anyway, we can move on. We can also add a debouncer. So let me just get rid of this wrapping over here. Come down, get rid of that. Get rid of the scroll target ref. Save it. So we're back to our original example. And now this time I'm going to say debounce and set that equal to 2000. So this is just saying, Wait two seconds before you actually go ahead and load the new data. So if we scroll to the bottom, one, two, then it starts loading the data. One, two, and there it goes. So that's pretty cool. It, maybe your APIs are getting hit a little bit too hard because people are abusing this, uh, this scrolling feature. So in that case, you might want to add a debouncer there. We can also change the initial index. For whatever reason, you might not want to start at index one. So in that case, you can just say initial dash index and set that equal to something like five. Save it. Oh, and the reason that's not working, I think, is because there isn't enough posts on this API. So let's change that to a two. Refresh the page. And there we go. We can see here that it's loaded from three. So it's going to add one to that index uh, to basically offset from a zero based index. So we go to straight to page three. And then when we scroll down, it's going to try page four. And the last thing I'll show you before wrapping this one up is that we have disable. So we can say disable here and you can toggle that on and off. And that basically means that you will not be able to continue scrolling. So what you might do is say, hey, if I got an error from the back end, I'm going to disable the infinite scroll. Or if the back end tells me that there aren't any more posts available, I'll disable infinite scroll so that the user doesn't keep hitting the back end unnecessarily. So there you go. That's the infinite scroll component. Really cool, really easy to get up and running with and super handy. I'll see you in the next video.